So let's be real, most fishermen, including myself, love to take good pictures of our fish, especially if we caught a big fish. So we want to memorize this fish and hopefully the picture is gonna turn out really epic. <laughs> My name is Søren Rasik with Just Fishing DK and today I'm gonna address to you 15 tips on how you can make even more beautiful, crispy, delicious photos of hopefully your dream fish. But sometimes when you've been so skillful and lucky to catch the big fish, maybe your photo turns out like this. Maybe like this, or even like this. And that's really something to avoid. So guys, here are 15 tips on how you can take even better photos of your catch. The first tip of the day is angle is key. And here I'm talking specifically how you hold the fish and how you point the camera. So one tip is to get low, but I've seen a lot of people kneeling down, having another person taking their photos and another person is just standing up really high taking a picture down towards the angler and the fish. And I'm not telling you guys that this is a mistake, but I'm just telling you, if you get down low and maybe in the same eye level as the angler and the fish, or maybe a bit below, both the fish and the angler will come out so much better. You will have more visual contact with the fish and it will seem bigger, by the way, and, and it will just pop out even more in the frame. So that is definitely something to try out. So tip number two is actually to shoot wide open. And this is all about the aperture. So there are both downsides and bonuses while shooting wide open. One of the bonuses is that the subject really get pulled out from the background. You can kind of isolate the subject and make the background go completely blurry. And that is something that's really cool. I think it gives a more artistic and professional look. And if you guys are a bit afraid of people will find out where you're fishing, this is a really good way to like, um, to like blurry out the background without doing it in Photoshop. So that's something to consider. So the third tip of the day is to use natural lighting. And this is because I really like the natural vibe and feeling you get when shooting with natural light. With a flash, you will get a bit more harsh shadow. And I personally think when you're outside having this already beautiful natural light, you don't have to carry any extra weight with you. So definitely stick to the natural light. And when shooting natural light, you have the best quality of light during the morning and the evening. Because here you have a more, more even light and the light is a bit lower. And that is definitely more flattering on the, on the surroundings. And of course you can shoot in directly sunlight as well. Here I often place the angler in direct sunlight with them facing the sun and the sun behind my back. Because this will lighten up your subject and your background even more and make them pop out compared to if you had the sun behind the subject. That can be an artistic way of doing it as well, having the, the sun directly behind the subject. You can get some nice flares and stuff, but that takes a bit more of practice. So the fourth tip of the day is a bit more technical as well, and that is to use low ISO. So basically ISO is a way of telling how light sensitive your camera is. And this can be both of your DSLR camera and as well in your smartphone. Basically, every time you have a camera, there is a sensor and that has an ISO. So a low ISO number, and that could be around 100, which is normally the, the lowest setting you can get on any camera. That really doesn't make the sensor that light sensitive, but it has the cleanest image as possible. But as you start to raise your ISO number, your sensor will become more sensitive to light, which can be a good thing in the right circumstances. But as you're raising it, and the sensor becomes more sensitive for light, it will start to show more grain as well. So the higher ISO number you have, the more grainy footage you will have as well. So unless you're taking pictures in early day or evening where there aren't really a lot of light, then you should definitely keep your ISO to a minimum and get the best image quality as possible. The fifth tip of the day is all about the health of the fish. And by this, I basically mean that you should never, ever, ever let a fish die because of a good picture. And there are many things you can do to avoid this. One is to be prepared. You definitely don't wanna be stumbling around trying to put your, your battery in your camera and, and stumbling across everything when you have a, a fish on the hook. So that's really something to remember and I cannot really address this enough, it's so important. Another tip on this could be like always wet your hands when touching the fish. I know this is not good for your camera, but then you definitely need something to dry out your hands, a towel or anything, because you definitely need to have wet hands every time you're touching a fish. Hey, you guys still here? Great. Then we can carry on to the sixth tip of the day, which is all about the background. 
So backgrounds are really important for all kinds of photos and this includes the fishing photos as well. So one thing to avoid and definitely look after when choosing the background for your fishing photos is heavily colored stuff. So let's say there's parked a nice red car in the background. Our eyes will definitely see that red car first and then afterwards tends to go for the fish. So anything colored is to avoid in the photo. Anything light in the background is actually to be avoided a bit as well because the human eye tends to see the lightest thing first. So our eyes is naturally drawn to the lightest thing in the image and that should be your fish. So try to avoid any light spots as well in the background. And I know some of you might be thinking right now that you just said that I had to be quick. I cannot change the background when I have caught a fish. And of course you cannot really change the background, but one thing you can do is actually just to turn a bit. And this seems like an awful simple tip, but often it's just enough to turn a bit to the side, either one of them, and then you'll have a completely another background. The next tip is all about composing the photo. And this is a really important step as well, as the composing is almost everything to draw in the viewer in the image and show off the fish in the right way. So when choosing the right composition, you definitely have some tools to help you. One thing you can do is actually to turn on the grid on your phone or your camera. This grid can help you keep the fish in the center or slightly off center. Another thing you can be using is the rule of thirds. So rule of thirds basically means that you split up your image in different sections and then you have some guidelines to where you should place your subject. So you should definitely see this as a tool that can help you place your subject in your frame. So instead of having it all the way to the one side, maybe cutting off a tail or a head of the fish or having it to the other side, you should be placing your subject, in this case, your fish and your angler a bit off center. In this way, you will always have the best composition and then you can eventually crop in the image afterwards. The next tip is all about being prepared. And I talked a bit about this before, but I definitely want to address it again because it's just so damn important. You never know when you will hook up to a big fish and you just need that camera to be ready. So make sure that your batteries are charged, your batteries are in the camera, your SD card are in and formatted. You don't want to have to delete pictures to make room or space for new pictures while you're fighting a fish. So make sure there's enough space in your SD card and have your lens cleaned and everything. So you definitely need to be prepared so you're ready while you have that big fish on the hook. So the next tip is all about helping each other out. And this can be really helpful if you are multiple persons out fishing. A helpful thing could be to teach the people around you, your friends, how to take a picture. And you don't obviously have to give them a whole lesson in the camera, but just how to turn it on and snap a photo. Then you can eventually dial the, the settings in before you catch the big fish. And then you don't have to be standing with the big fish trying to maybe even hold a big DSLR camera with the fish. So that could be something that is pretty helpful as well. 10th tip of the day is all about action. So by this I mean that a lot of people are actually forgetting the whole scenery that takes place while you're fighting the fish. You know, the fish can jump off the water each time and there's water everywhere and a lot of action is going on and this can lead to some pretty epic photos as well. So definitely not forget all the action photos. Next tip I want to share with you is something I call one fish, three photos. And that is something I found really helpful when catching and photographing a fish. So this whole concept with one fish, free photo, I actually made because I felt like every time I've taken one single photo of the fish, it wasn't really enough. I needed some more variation, but I didn't really have the time to like do multiple angles and, and think a lot about how the composition should be while I was standing with the fish. So I made this concept, one fish, three photos. So every time I have caught a fish and I need to photograph it, I need to take three different pictures. I need to take one narrow, I need to take one close up and I need to take one wider photo. So basically I've done in my head that this is a routine that I need to be doing all the time. So in this way, it actually takes the same amount of time if I will just take a normal one picture because I go in, boom, next photo and next photo. So it really doesn't take that long time. So that's a technique I have found really helpful and maybe it can help you guys as well. So we are almost coming to an end with those tips, but we still have a few to go. So the next tip is all about get your lines straight. And by this, I mean specifically the horizontal line. 
I know a lot of people who's taking pictures and not really paying attention to, to getting the lines straight. And they often end up with some pretty whack pictures all out of scale and they have to correct it afterwards to make it better. And then they lose some of the pictures because they have to crop in. And it can be, of course, an artistic way to get some angles. And obviously the lines doesn't have to be straight there, but just always keep attention on the lines. But if you tend to have a photo that is everything else and straight, you can always straighten it afterwards in Photoshop or any other app you can use for retouching images. Just keep in mind that you will always lose a bit of the image when you have to straighten it. So definitely something to keep in mind. Next tip is all about protecting your gear and your camera while you're at the water. I know a lot of you guys have an expensive camera or a phone they use to take the pictures with and you don't really want that to be ruined by some rain or some water. So when you're not using your device to take pictures, then you should consider having it in a waterproof bag or a water resistant bag. So in this way, it won't get damaged if there comes any water or rain at the trip. So the second last tip for today and one rule to rule them all is to nail your focus each time. So you really have to have a natural way of focusing. Of course, you can make a lot of creativity and, and choose some artistic decision on where you want the focus. But a good rule is to focus right by the eye. So right by the eye, either of the fish or the person holding the fish. In this way, you will have a much more natural focus that will seem a bit more pleasing to the eye. The last tip of the day, guys, is to keep your editing to a minimum. I see a lot of person, and I've done it myself as well, to just go into your editing software, Photoshop or even Instagram and just put on a filter and see this explosion of colors. And sometimes it looks cool, but let's be honest, most of the time is way overdone. And you really don't want to be ruining your photo and especially the nice photo of the big fish with a lot of fake colors and, and stuff like that. So just keep it in mind that you need to do those tweaks really subtle. Often I'm just using a bit of a contrast and saturation on my photos and just make them pop a bit more. But I really like to keep it natural and present the fish and the angler in a natural way. So that you guys was 15 tips on how to take better fishing photos. It has been such a pleasure having you here watching along and I want to thank you so much for tuning in on this video. If you found it helpful and if you have some other tips as well, despite from the ones I've mentioned here, then feel free to comment down below. I would love to hear your tips on how to take better fishing photos as well. If it's the first time you're here, then you should definitely consider subscribing to the channel. It will mean an awful lot to us and help us grow and make even more fishing videos and tutorials like this one for you guys to see in the future.